Welcome to Beyond Abuse, and today I wanted to talk about unlearning. We often think about all the things that we need to learn about, and we will learn, but I think the most profound thing that I have found works for me is unlearning. Anything and everything that I had been told about myself by my abusers, there's been more than one in my life, has been false. It's what they needed us to believe about ourselves so that they could have the power. They couldn't have the power and control over us if we knew the truth, if we understood the truth about who we are. We needed to be told and shown that we were imperfect and that our imperfections were worse than just being human. These imperfections were that we were broken, that we were somehow void, but really they were the ones that were void. And so there was a projection. They needed us to believe what they were. And so as we start to uncover and unlearn what we thought reality was, a huge aha for me was recognizing that in that projection, you need to unlearn that the person that I was initially in love with was a projection of who I am. They were a chameleon. They wanted to become us so that we would feel connected to them. So that original person that we were so in love with was really who we are. For me, you take a moment to think about that, is huge. We were the creative ones. We were the talented ones. We were the honest ones. We were the ones with the huge heart that gave everything that we had to them. We were the generous ones. They were the takers. But we didn't see them as that. We didn't see them as what they really were. They needed to look like we presented ourselves to them so that we would think, you are my soulmate. You connect with me. You fit my life, my morals, my feelings to a T. We're such a good match. The match was really us. What we saw in our abuser is what we failed to see in ourselves. That's why they had to strip us of who we were and tell us the opposite of what we really were. They needed us to believe that so they could be us. I know it's really hard to wrap your head around, but if you think back at all the traits that the abuser originally gave to us, what were they? What was it that you were so in awe about? Remember, if you are with someone high on the narcissistic spectrum, which may be also comorbid with other things, it's about them deceiving us. And we needed to buy into it. And what's important to us, they wanted to give to us. But what's important to us is what we are. If we are trusting, if we are loving, we want a trusting, loving person. If we're creative, we want someone who's creative. Because that person can share a commonality with us in ways that people who don't have that can't. So they have been a a big neon sign of a reminder that says, love this about you. You don't see it. And we don't see it until we're out of it because the disillusion of, oh my God, they're not at all who they thought they were. We thought they were. At the same time, we are not seeing ourselves for who we are. But this is a, an opportunity to recognize everything they saw in us 
that was a plus. Remember, if we were not a plus, an asset, if we were a horrible person, they would not have picked us. Exploitive people look for people they can exploit that have great traits. That's the good news. The good news is we just need to remember and go back to understanding what it was we were attracted to to begin with. That is what they saw in us and they mirrored it back to us so that we would fall in love with them. But it really wasn't them. It was a reflection of ourselves. And once we come out of the abuse and we begin to heal and begin to recognize that that mirror that we saw in our abuser is the reality of who we are, we can become, begin to appreciate, to honor, and believe in that versus all the things they told us we were that were untrue. Because unless and until there could be a crack in the mirror of how we saw ourselves, we could only see it outside of ourselves, the gig would be up. And if you're watching this, the abuse cycle is coming to an end or has ended. And now you're working on putting that mirror back together so that you can have a more accurate view over you and the world because they're master deceptors. They deceive us. They're like a magician that is constantly putting out these fake mirrors, you know, like distorted view of what we are in reality, right? If they have flying monkeys out there, they're telling them stories and those stories are being spread and we get all upset because other people will believe that. Well, no matter what other people believe, it's most important what we believe in ourselves. There will always be people who don't believe. Remember, we didn't believe it ourselves. And unless until we can start owning the reflection in much more clarity and understand how the deception works, the key to unlocking the abuse is, is beginning. It is starting to melt away. The control, when we wrap our head around the reality of what we've been through, how it was done, we can let go of the abuse and start turning the tables back into our favor. All the things that they didn't want us to know we're figuring out that's where the freedom lies that's where the peace is that's where the joy comes from from within they knew they couldn't control us forever it's doomed at some point to fall apart because the foundation of what this relationship was was based on lies they are full of lies they can't have a real relationship but when we begin to heal, understand ourselves, and how this happened to us, it's our turn to grow and have this opportunity to be further and further away from the, the depths of what an abuser could ever do to us again. Because wisdom is power and understanding all that they didn't want us to know is becoming the norm. I know that you can do this. I did this. My clients have done this. And knowledge is power. I am happy that you are here on this journey of discovering what you need to know so that you can find the peace, love, and joy in your life that you deserve.